I am going to start this video, this sort of drama update progression thing, uh, with a trigger warning because I am going to talk about pregnancy loss. Um, I don't know, I might start crying, we'll see how numb I am to the whole thing, but it, it's just Shannon's letter to my husband Stephen, not me, but to Stephen, saying that none of what she said about the miscarriage happened has been sticking with me so badly that I just... I know talking to her is not going to help. I know saying my piece to her and David is not going to make a difference to them. So I just, I just want it heard somewhere. And I've never talked about this specific part of the miscarriage process. I did bring up what she said in other videos, like way, way back and complained about it, but I have not gotten into the full story time details. So here it is. Okay. So April, 2023, my boyfriend of the time, now my husband came down to spend the weekend with me and I'm like, Hey, uh, I'm kind of late, kind of worried. I might be pregnant right now. Take a test. It comes out positive. Long story short, he was a total jackass for about 24 hours until I sort of come to Jesus meeting with him and like, hey, look, we're going to talk this out. We're going to think things through. We're not going to make rash decisions. Like, th like this is the situation we're in. We got to talk about this. And then my boyfriend flipped a switch and he got very, very excited to have a baby. Two days after that happened, it was Shannon and David's wedding. So we knew we had to like shut up, keep everything to ourselves, not compete with their big day. And that's fine because you're really not supposed to talk about pregnancy until you're like three-ish months in because it's so easy to have a miscarriage. Well, lo and behold, the day after Mother's Day in May of 2023, I had a really bad, painful miscarriage. Like I was suffering all weekend. I was having trouble sitting upright. Um, I remember it was Mother's Day weekend because we were supposed to do something at David and Shannon's house with my now mother-in-law and we had to call and cancel that or text and cancel that something. And I remember that I think it was David that responded and he seemed really pissy that we were canceling. And it, it's literally, we even called the dad and the dad could hear me coughing in the background. It's like, oh yeah, she sounds bad. Keep her at home. But whatever, that is what it is. About a week-ish after the miscarriage happens, my now husband, Stephen, went on this whole weird campaign that even to this day, I don't really understand where it's like, he kind of didn't want to talk to me about the miscarriage. He didn't want to process it with me. He wanted to go and talk about it to everybody else. And he wanted to go talk to his brother and sister-in-law about it. And I'm like, I don't think this is the kind of information to give to family because, you know, if they feel a certain way about it or if they have a certain history about it that you don't know, this could go poorly very easily. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm going to show you what a good family looks like, what a real family looks like. And they're going to be so supportive. So come on, let's go talk to them. And so he has it set in his head that he wants to talk to David. Like this is going to happen whether I put my foot down and say no or not. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to send Shannon a message. Here's the message and give her a heads up because like, I don't want to go and like trigger them right to their face with no heads up. And so Stephen ends up calling his brother, David. David's like, oh yeah, you're at your apartment. We're five minutes away at mom and dad's house, but we will not talk to you today. You come to our house tomorrow and you can talk to us. And that was already really weird because they live about 30, 40 minutes from where Stephen's apartment was at that point. Um, but we go down there. Uh, Steven tells them everything. He's sobbing. I'm sitting there kind of going into my fight or flight numbness where it's just like I'm, I'm disassociated out of my body. And so like David and Shannon are hugging Steven and then Shannon starts going, Hey McGann, I'm about to go take a shower. Why don't you come in the shower and, and talk to me? And I'm like, I'm not going to follow this chick into the bathroom. Like, you know, we're friends, but like, I don't know you that well. I'm not following you into the bathroom. And I'm just politely like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I follow Steven and his nephew down into the basement where they're playing the Binding of Isaac card game. And then Shannon gets out of the shower. She comes downstairs. Hey, I'm going to Aldi. Come on with me to Aldi. Come on with me to Aldi. Like she keeps asking over and over again. And it got to the point of like, okay, it's going to be rude if I say no at a certain point. So like, I'm just going to go get it over with whatever. Apparently she wants to tell me something, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. So anyways, we're in her Jeep. We are driving to Aldi and she's like, well, have you really talked to any of your friends about it? And I'm like, well, most of my friends are reacting to this like it's good news or like I just told them I ordered a chicken sandwich for lunch. Like like they are not responding with any kind of care and it's just very disheartening. I don't want to reach out to any more people. And that, that really was the scenario. And after I started posting more TikToks with more detail and like, you know, sobbing about things and a lot of the friends who did not say kind things came back and apologized. Um, like, hey, we did not realize you were suffering this badly about it. Um, 
But yeah, it was a hard time. And she said something about like, well, what about your therapist? And I was like, well, she might be on vacation or something because I've texted her and not heard back yet. Um, so I'm just kind of like waiting it out. You know, it's been a rough week. And then it took a turn and it was kind of weird because she was like, oh, well, I just really wanted to get you out of the house because Steven has such big emotions that I, I bet he's keeping you from feeling yours. I bet it's so annoying that he's coming down and spending every night with you right now. And I, I remember, like, so perfectly, like, well, I mean, yeah, he is around a lot, but it's kind of nice to have somebody there and not just be, like, you know, sitting in this pile of misery on my own. And then we're inside of Aldi, and she's explaining to me what the Isle of Shame is, because I'm really not an Aldi shopper. Like, a long time ago, I had a friend who was an Aldi store manager, and we had a bad falling out, so I just, I kind of don't go to Aldi because of that. She's explaining Aldi culture to me, and she's kind of like, you know, hey, hey, you know, keep talking bad about Steven kind of prompts. And I was like, actually, you know, he was a big asshole for the first probably 24 hours after we found out. But then I got adult Steven for the first time ever where he was planning college funds and he was getting insurance together. And like he was getting all these ducks in a row and he was so excited. Like you have no idea. Like it was it was the nicest thing ever to go from having this nerdy boy who I couldn't even tell for sure, like, if he liked me sometimes because he was so neurodivergent, to having somebody who was, like, so focused and on the ball and we have one goal and one, you know, one one setting in mind. We're checked out of Aldi, we're driving back to her house, we're still talking, and she said something about how, you know, I just sound like I'm kind of frustrated. And I'm like, well... I am frustrated that the doctor, the gynecologist that we saw after the miscarriage, said we have about a week and a half to decide what we want to do. If we're going to try again, if we're going to go fertility meds, if it's just, if it happens, it happens, if we're, if we're giving up here. And I'm so pissed off that I don't understand why Steven is going, you know, yes, no, up, down, left, right. Like he can't make up his mind what he wants when he was so excited to have this baby just a week ago. And Shannon, while driving, said to me, well, that's because Stephen never wanted that baby. He was just forced into it. And I remember feeling like I just got stabbed, like my all the blood in my body went cold. I remember staring at the slats in, in her vent in the Jeep and just like, I, I said, that's not what he's been saying to me. And then I barely said anything for the rest of the time that we were around them. Like, I know I didn't say anything all the way back. And we got back. We all got Mexican food together. And I remember just sitting there in, like, so much silence in this Mexican place that didn't have air conditioning. And just when, when we left, and I'm sitting there in my head because she said it with such authority that I'm sitting there in my head thinking, did she have a private conversation with Steven that I don't know about? Like, is, is this information she's trying to tell me? Like, it wasn't a maybe he didn't want that baby. It was a he didn't want that baby. He was just forced into it. And with so much authority, like, it fucked me up. There, There is a letter naming this as one of the reasons why I almost ended myself. And, like, it fucked me up so badly. And for that bitch to go into a letter addressed only to my husband and account everything but stop right before that moment and say, no, that never happened. Your wife is a liar. Fuck her so hard.